All right, everybody, this guy has been a Vault Guardian for a long time, and a few months ago, I would have said, ah, he's a terrible pull, but recently, he's got a pretty big buff, and I gotta say, I think it's time to pull this dude out of the vault. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today, we're going to be talking about Vistaphis. Now, this guy is definitely not a new champion whatsoever. However, hopefully you guys find this video valuable because for the longest time, this guy was a Vault Guardian. And all the videos, or well, most of the videos that I've seen are saying that basically he is a Vault Guardian, one of the worst legendaries, which at a time he was. But with the recent buff that Plarium gave him, I think it boosted him up to being a viable legendary. Like, I would actually build him on my free-to-play account. Let me know if you've built him as well because I've actually seen... More people in the last few weeks, either more people are pulling him or I'm just noticing it more because I know he's gotten a buff recently from the recent patch. I don't know which one it is, but if you've pulled him, if you use him, let me know how you have him built. Do you have him built for damage or for applying the debuffs? Uh, I'm going to mention both those builds. One of them I think is way better than the other one, but this champion in general, I think actually does have some good use. If I pull him off free to play account, I will definitely build him. His A3 ability, this is where it all shines. This is what was buffed. So now... It says attacks all enemies, 75% chance of placing block active skills, as well as decreased defense. When this is fully booked, it goes up to a 100% chance. And block active skills is amazing. So if you don't know what it does, it blocks active skills. So it doesn't block passives. If, uh, if it's more too macabre, it's not going to block that, unfortunately. If it's uh, barren, it's not going to block the active skill if, or the passive skill if it does proc. But it means that champions can only use their A1 abilities against Bystophis. Now, if you bring him in dungeon content or if you bring him in the arena, wherever it may be, he doesn't have the best base HP and the best base defense. So you got to keep in mind, if you're going with, if you're bringing Vistaphis along, you're going to have to make sure he's protected in some way, right? Make sure he's built to at least sustain himself. He does have some heals on his A2 ability, which attacks all enemies, inflicts a crit under targets with block active skills debuff, and heals him by 20% of the damage inflicted. But if he can't even take a few hits, then that's not really going to matter, right? So definitely make sure whatever content you're bringing him in that he can survive because he's not going to be the most tanky and even though he's blocking out all active skills you don't have to worry about the enemies using well increased speed speed boost um, big aoe damage um, decreased defense aoe nothing like that really because most a a1 abilities aren't that serious but if your team's squishy he or your other teammates could definitely die so while block active skills is an amazing debuff it's not going to stop everything okay so do make sure you're bringing something alongside him to actually make sense his a1 ability we haven't touched on this yet Let's talk about it. Tax one enemy has a chance of placing block active skills as well as true fear if the target is already under a block active skills debuff. So both amazing there. As far as booking this champion goes, I would say book his A3 ability if you plan to use him. If you want to use him, I would say this is very, very valuable. Um, obviously, you can't target books. So if you don't book this, I would definitely try until you do because if you plan to use him, this is going to be very, very valuable. I mean, it's the same thing with any debuff champion. You want their debuffs to be 100%. If not, it's just going to be so inconsistent, it may not feel good. You can still use him if it's not 100% chance, but you're just not going to get the full benefit and the full effect from it. Now, his aura increases ally accuracy in all battles by 70. This is actually really good because you can also use this in the arena. Now, you don't have to have a go second team for this to make sense. If I'm going against somebody like this, for example, if I use this team, this could very well work. Maybe I throw in my Lady Kimmy instead because I, maybe I want some more um, accuracy. I'm going to boost my accuracy up even more. So 70 accuracy plus Lady Kimmy's 50% boost should give me enough to actually strip this team. I've seen a lot more resistance leads, a lot more resistance champions, a lot more big team powers in the arena now than I ever have in the past. So Bastophis's increase or ally um, accuracy aura definitely gonna be a nice little help in the arena. Um, now let's take a look at his multipliers real quick. His multipliers, he has a 2.6 on his A2 ability and his A1 3.2 and his A3 1.35. So his multipliers are not terrible, and for having the highest base attack in the game, 1795, you can stack a lot of attack on this champion. They're not bad. Now, what I was talking about, the damage build, I'm going to talk about a little bit right now, but then past this, I'm not going to talk about it anymore because I don't think that's going to make sense for most players. But essentially, if I was going to go that build, I would use this setup right here. And I did test this on the test server. I tried to go ahead, and which this is not a test server. I actually did book him, and this is a live server now. But... If you take him and put him to like 200 accuracy, maybe you're doing dungeons and you only need 200 accuracy, build him to 200 accuracy, make sure he's fast, make sure he has good speed, but then stack a lot of attack, stack a lot of crit damage, then he's going to use his A3 ability, he's going to apply the block 
active skills and the decreased defense. Decreased defense obviously is an amazing debuff by itself, but block active skills, very, very good too. And it sets up that A2 ability to be a guaranteed crit. So essentially you could have that A3 applying the debuffs. Doesn't matter what your crit rate is there because you're not really going for good damage and it has a low multiplier as it is. And then once you do that, have the A2 ability, you just stack a ton of crit damage on this guy. Maybe you get to 300% crit damage. Once that A2 hits, you're going to do a good chunk of damage from him if you're able to gear him like that. Now for me, I can't quite gear him like that and to make sense because for me, I would much rather use him in the arena as just a decreased defense plus block active skills champion to follow up with my Kaimar. My Kaimar is going to sleep him. He's going to strip him. And then Bistophis is going to place block active skills and decreased defense, preventing them from doing much. Now, he does have some downsides in the arena. I'm going to get into that once we get over there. But let's talk about the build that I'm going to go with. So my build is going to be this one right here. Currently, he doesn't have any masteries on him. I haven't bought him and I haven't grinded him for him. I will do some Minotaur later on, but I haven't done it yet. I just booked him because we have CVC going on. So I went ahead and booked him out. But let's look at these. So this is what I have. Basically, the most important ones. Master Hexer going to extend the debuff duration. We have decrease ac or the increased accuracy from Eagle Eye, which is very nice. Uh, the skill, the chance to reset the skill cooldown. It's a basic setup. Lore of Steel. With this, just keep in mind, you want to push more accuracy. Get in the counterattacks from... Retribution is also very nice because he does have the block active skills on the A1 ability as well. Uh, but overall, just a typical support type mastery setup with this champion. I, like I said, I'm not worried about him doing damage. Now, as far as his uh, champion ratings, I went ahead and did this. Basically, in the arena offense, he's going to be good. He's going to be very good on wave control and dungeons. Very, very good. Block active skills plus decreased defense is really extremely helpful, right? Um, faction Wars, he's going to be amazing for Night Res Faction Wars. Decrease, well, same thing. A3 ability is going to be super, super helpful. Four turn cooldown, definitely not terrible. Um, his artifacts, let's go ahead and click through them and look at them when I have him built for. We have speed and accuracy. I'll just click through this stuff and you guys can see it. Basically, what I'm trying to do is keep him speed tuned to go as close of speed as possible with my Leors. My Leors is my nuker. So I want to make sure once Kaimar sleeps him, that if Bystophis hits him, that they're not either waking up or they're not getting turn meter boosted if he does crit and cuts too far ahead of my Leors and then messes up my entire team. So I wanna make sure they're as close as possible. That doesn't really matter if you're actually, if you're speed tuned, like if you have double speed booster or if you're doing a different speed tune type team, it matters with me because Kaimar sleeps people and Bisophis would wake him up because he deals damage. So his artifact setup right now, accuracy on the banner, I do believe. But if you're just doing dungeons, you don't need that much accuracy. You don't need 540 plus accuracy. You could go with just 200 accuracy. My accuracy setup currently is for the arena, but especially with all these champions running resistance, I want to make sure I have a healthy amount of accuracy. Now, if it was a dungeon setup specifically, I would do HP, defense, speed, and then push my accuracy to at least 200. If he's going really fast, he's going to cycle through his abilities obviously much quicker. I don't think I got to spell that out for you guys. Y'all are smart. You already know that. Um, and if you have revenge accessories, throw them on him because he's going to place those block active skills whenever people attack or true fear on champions who already have the block active skills so i think the best way to showcase this is just to spend the next few minutes or whatever it is just kind of chilling in the arena because to be 100 percent honest my dungeon teams would look very very different from your guys's okay he's a pretty simple champion in how he works basically if he's going to be weak affinity so spirit affinity he's going to have weak hits he's not going to place the block active skills or the decreased defense so he's going to struggle a little bit there possibly duchess is in the arena he's going to struggle a little bit if i took him into a stage dragon 20 I'd probably want to bring champions like Duchess, any champion to help him stay alive or make sure he's got better HP, better defense, whatever it may be. I would want to bring just champions in to basically keep the pressure off of him. Now on magic affinity stages, it's not going to be that bad because they're not going to attack him. They're not going to focus on him. Most likely they're going to focus on other people, but you want to have res champions, whatever it is, because he's like any typical attack based champion. He's going to be pretty squishy, right? So keep that in mind. Let's go in the arena. Now, in the early parts of the arena, I think he's going to be even better because there's going to be less duchesses. Now, we'll see what happens here. He's not going to place a block active skills, not going to do the decreased defense if he weak hits, obviously. So it is something to watch out for. Now, I did already hit this team earlier, and they have pretty high resistance, okay? The uh, duchess actually resisted me, so I'm going to go ahead and throw Lady Kimmy in here because I'm not trying to get it resisted again on this video. I already tried doing the recording once, and I'm going to try not to get resisted this time. But we have him in the accuracy aura. So right now, my Kaimor is sitting at... Uh, 70 extra accuracy, so well over seven, or well over 600, plus the 50% boost. So I don't think we're gonna get resisted, but maybe we do. Okay, go ahead and see what happens here. Um, I don't think they should cut in on us. We should be faster, even with the situation we have with no speed, no speed aura in the lead. 
Let's see, everything should be there. Perfect, perfect. Uh, now this is where it's gonna be a little bit unfortunate. You can see two red arrows there. He could very well get weak hits, but let's see. If he doesn't get a weak hit, we ideally we wanna block active skills on the Duchess. Unfortunately, we did not get that off. We got it on everybody else, but we don't have to worry about Lydia. Well, really this team is not a great block, a great team to have their skills blocked because more two doesn't matter. He's gonna use his passive ability anyways, because it procs. Duchess is the only one we really wanna block. Um, if we could get back around, that'd be perfect, but unfortunately we can't strip that. So right now, let's see what kind of damage he does. Okay. Let's see what kind of damage this could be good. Uh, so we'll use this and he hits for 5,200. So nothing crazy there. Now Duchess is the main one I want to block active skills, but since he has weak affinity, this is where it's going to be not the perfect situation, right? So if we go back in here again, we'll try it one more time just for the video sake. If he lands the block active skills, or at least doesn't get a weak hit, then he's probably going to land everything, right? Because he has good accuracy. If he doesn't get a weak hit, we're going to be perfectly fine. We essentially have two turns of no res is happening from Duchess, right? So definitely the ideal situation for sure. She, she woke up. Now, hopefully it works now just for the video's sake. Let's see it. We can't weak hit that much, right? Okay, perfect. So now we're not really under any threat. More two is going to attack Malie worse. Obviously, depending on what kind of team you have set up, it's going to be different. But more, uh, more two is going to attack him once his skill procs, which is going to proc, right? He's well, he didn't attack Leoris. He's had to go for Bystophis. What, what in the world? He almost always attacks my Leoris. I've, that's actually the first time I've ever seen him not attack Leo. So it's interesting for sure. But Duchess still has one more turn where she can't do anything at all. So this is obviously the best case scenario where he actually didn't land the weak hit. So times like this makes the arena pretty easy. Now against Siffy's, against uh, Rector Drath. Same thing, no problem. She's force affinity, so not an issue. I'm gonna go ahead and try out some of these other teams. We'll put him in the lead because we don't really need to be faster because they don't have any good speed boosters, so we should be faster anyways. My arbiter is like 360, so we should be fine. We should this should help me out in having enough accuracy to actually strip everybody, and then hopefully apply the block active skills, which does work on Leo, so he will get the block active skills and only be able to use his A1 ability, which is very very nice. Got the weak hit on Duchess. Apps, that's a little frustrating getting the weak hits on Duchess, but depending on where you're at in the arena, that may or may not be an issue, right? Like if you're at a level in the arena where Duchess isn't really that popular, then you ain't got to worry about that, right? But if you're seeing her all the time, if you're in gold, high gold four, gold five, platinum arena, obviously by stuff is going to have a big downside there. But if you have Kaimar, I guess you can just keep trying until he actually does place black at his skills because now she can't res. So this is like a perfect example of how valuable he can be. And if this was a shaman in low level arena, not an issue, right? She wouldn't be resing for two turns. Two turns, you can do quite a bit. Two turns of only having to worry about their A1 abilities is a significant portion of the match, especially in arena. You know, arena doesn't last that long. Typically, we're going to skip a few more matches to see if we can see what's happening. I want to get some people who are a little bit higher, uh, hopefully higher resistance. I want to see some Siffy leaders because Siffy lead. Okay, right here. Well, Dagnabbit, it's still a Duchess. So we're just getting constantly stuck with these duchesses. I'll stick with the accuracy aura because they don't have no speed lead. I'll probably be fine. Even if I'm not, I'll just strip a Kaimar. So it wasn't faster, which is unfortunate, but my arbor is not that fast. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then hopefully block active skills on everybody, block active skills on everybody. Boom. Much, much easier. Now, Kandrafon's pretty nasty still. Okay. He is definitely a nasty champion, but is, he's not gonna be able to use his A2, right? He's only using his A1 ability, which means I don't really have that much to worry about. As long as I can get rid of him within a few turns, he's gone now. So now that we have two turns of just us and Duchess. So just us and Duchess, just turn on auto, should be fine. He's gonna use his A1 ability and hopefully keep that block active skills applied. Well, will he use his A1 ability on auto? I don't know, but let's go ahead and use the A2 again. Uh, weak hits, weak hits are gonna happen. It's an unfortunate part of the game, but it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and boost up the turn meter a little bit more. Swift parry. Nope, she didn't actually proc Swift parry. Sweet. So if he if he lands a block active skills on the res champions, perfect situation. If not, well, it's a little unfortunate. We'll use a team like this, another excellent example. Um, we're going to block everybody because there's no spirit affinity champions here whatsoever. So get nothing to worry about. And then Trunda kind of uh, mess her up because Trunda, she's a threatening champion, but when she can only use her A1 ability, she's not as threatening, right? Uh, so block active skills on everybody. And then we just kind of turn on auto and we're good to go. So A3 there, Trunda uses her A1. It's not that big of a deal, right? That would have wiped my entire team out had it been her A3 or A2 ability. But since it wasn't, 
doesn't really do that as much. So I do like him. I'm actually starting to like him quite a bit, especially more playing him here. I'm learning what teams he's going to be better in. Obviously, this kind of team, not great. Uh, more two doesn't really matter because he just ignores it anyways. Throws off his passive. Uh, he doesn't care. He's not stopped by these, <laughs> these block active skills thing, right? He doesn't care. His passive ability is all he cares about. Um, let's go ahead and see uh, this team right here, I guess. Let's try this. So... Similar team. It's going to be fast. Leo, Molly's going to provoke. So hopefully I'm faster. Perfect. Uh, if I am faster, then we're going to go around. They're going to wake up. Everybody woke up except for Lydia. Obviously, Leo never even goes to sleep. He's such a good champion. Uh, Molly has a chance of resisting or getting a weak hit as well. So if she would have got a weak hit, obviously that would have been unfortunate. But she didn't. So we did apply that. Leo can't use his AoE ability, which is what could mess my team up. We go ahead and use the big hit. Leo's going to get unkillable. And now he's just going to do his A1, wishing he could do his A3 or his A2, but he can't. And I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> well, what was that going to do? I completely overlooked the Lydia, but it's all good because she's going to die again. Uh, so now A1 ability. Leo's one of the most scary champions to be on Swift Parry, 1 HP, because you know, hey, next turn, if he has an AoE ability, I'm about to be wiped. Just one go. Leo and Kandrafon are some nasty, nasty champions. So hopefully, guys, that's a little decent showcase for you all. Uh, but Stafis, I'm starting to like him more. I think especially if you're doing dungeon content, he's a good champion to build up. You can use him in dungeons. You can use him in the arena. You can use him very good in Faction Wars as well, which Faction Wars for Night Revs opens in one week. So I guess next week, <laughs> I will put him into my Faction War team. He's been sitting in my vault for a long time. But I wanted to make this video because I know a lot of people probably either have him in the vault or have seen videos saying that he's a vault champion. And he was for a long time. But I think he's risen from the vault and can be used now. So enjoy your best office. Let me know how you guys have him built. Let me know if you actually have him built to do damage, like I mentioned before. I don't think it's going to be as popular, but I'd definitely be interested because maybe, maybe some of you guys have a better build for him. But thank you all very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you all in the next one.